Hello. Welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Um, what do I normally say at this point? Yeah, uh, only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. Maybe like, click the like button and perhaps leave a comment if you like. That'd be nice. If you wish to support this free service that I've been offering since 2006, uh, go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland and the link is in the comments section or in the description box in YouTube and also on my website yay that's all that boring stuff out of the way now for some more boring stuff so the point of this every now and then I like to describe what it is that my intention is for this let me bore you to sleep recording it's really about we can be a it can be a mixture of things uh it's become more than I originally anticipated that it might be at first. So my intention was just to be boring and send you to sleep. It was kind of that basic. But along the way, uh, there's the added element of company uh, having itchy crotch that's what I've got right now just scratching myself sorry about that just had a bath as well ah flaky balls that's what it might be I need to get some moisturiser out I don't mind I won't do it whilst I'm talking to you and um, so I don't think uh, yeah I don't think oil <laughs> oiling me balls would be appropriate so I'm trying to get that image out of my head so okay back I'm back I'm back to the crack. So that was my intention just to be boring, just to talk and there and then and then just on and on and on and on. And this seems to be the added benefit of kind of distraction, maybe. Some people have told me that they like the uh, the distraction from their own thoughts which helps them to sleep some people oh, I've got an itchy back now oh. you know what I like to do I like to scratch my back on the door frame only when I've got an itchy back I don't do it just it's not a hobby but when I got an itchy back, I like to scratch it on the door frame. And sometimes I go up and down, sometimes I go across, sometimes I kind of do all all those different vertical movements. And this it's a little bit of pleasure, isn't it? It's just that, oh maybe I need to oil me back as well, give a bit of moisturizer, maybe you've got a flaky back. That somehow seems worse than the other thing. Oh. No, I don't think I'm flaky at the moment. I think I'm pretty 
everything's kind of as it should be all things considered and <laughs> so the idea really was just I was trying to picture when I first started doing this trying to picture like you know a scenario where you're talking to somebody and they're really boring and it's not anything against them because some of the most uh, someone that might be really interesting to one person may be very boring to another person based on what they're talking about you hear that that's the birds or the mice or something try in the cavities of the flat either that or it's a very very cocky ghost you know really uh, arrogant like just don't care if anyone hears me at all I'm getting comfortable Perhaps, perhaps it's the cavity ghost listening to me. By cavity, I don't mean like dental. You know, I'm a ghost in your teeth. That would be weird. Um, yeah. So the idea is you can just be talking to somebody. And generally, it isn't you don't talk to them they talk at you that's what I find the thing is that's what I like to do I prefer to talk at people and it's kind of the problem for me with conversations is listening to the other person and trying to figure out when it's my turn to bombard them with what it is I've got to say and it took me years and years and also a few comments and telling offs and you know criticisms and stuff from people telling me that I just seemed all I wanted to do is talk about what I was interested in and that I didn't seem interested in other people, what they had to say. And it's kind of true. You know, the difference back then, and I started changing the way I was and started pretend, pretending to be interested in what the other person had to say and uh, tried not to interrupt as much as... I once did when I was young younger like a kid and I suppose tried to be more adult and learnt how to communicate in a way that was sociably acceptable you know taking turns um, asking questions about the other person and pretending to be interested in what they're saying. Um, it's not always the case. Sometimes I was interested. But sometimes I just wanted to talk about what I wanted to talk about. You know, someone may be talking about, you know, something really deep and personal and you know, it's just like, but I want to talk about Bruce Lee. I want to talk about hypnosis. I want to talk about Mork and Mindy. And I get told, I don't shush. You're ruining the funeral. Stop shush. But I just, it's inappropriate, I suppose. But. The thing is, that's naturally what I'm like. Naturally, I just want to talk about myself. And I found my calling because I can. 
because I can just talk about myself all day long, and just upload the recordings, and it's as boring as anything you're ever going to hear. It's the most boring bunch of crap, honestly, and I make up a lot of it. Some of it's true, some of it's sort of make believe, some of it's just plain lies. It's it's and none of it mat none of it matters. Nothing that I say during these recordings really hold any kind of importance really. It's just a bunch of words just telling you about stuff that you don't need to know about and you're never going to need to know about and even I don't need to know about it. The ironic thing about it is if I meet somebody for the first time and they ask me about myself, I don't like to say anything because I don't like to talk about myself to someone that I don't know. And I think it's, someone said to me recently in a conversation, that I asked them a question, because I was generally interested. a lot of noise going on in that cavity of the wall calm down go to sleep Mr. Cavity Ghost Ooh. so yeah and this person said I asked a question and I was interested in my question and perhaps I was more interested in my question than I was in the answer Maybe, I don't know. I'm not really giving it much thought, but I asked the question, and the person was giving me the answer. And along the way, part of the answer, I. It reminded me of something, and it triggered something else in my head, and I started talking about that. And the person I was talking to said, We. You don't want to hear my answer then. But I I can't just sit there and listen to someone talking without just going to sleep. I find you know I've had friends that have just talked and talked and talked and talked. Trust me, I'm an expert on this. And I didn't get a, get a chance to Speak. Sometimes they just didn't even hear me because they were so busy talking about what they wanted to talk about. And I'm like that. I want to do it, but I try not to do it in reality. You know, not in... I do still do it, but not, not to that extent. Because I know it's annoying. I know out of... Uh, uh, in a normal situation it's not really acceptable but in this situation you've given me permission to talk and talk and talk it's all about me I love it oh, all about me I can tell you every intimate detail and when I run out of stuff to say I'll make stuff up sometimes I'll make stuff up before I've even started talking about the real stuff sometimes I forget what's real and what's not and none of it matters because at the end of the recording I've forgotten exactly what I've said I don't recall anything that I've ever said on any of my recordings it's brilliant I don't store it the recordings store it but I don't it's just gone it's just a bunch of words mixed together and then I press the stop button and you know upload it and do what's needed there but and the only part of the recording I ever hear is the very beginning when I edit the audio so it kind of fades in and then I listen to the very end 
so I can cut it and like fade it out. That's it. That's the only bit I ever hear of my recordings. Yeah, I'm not sitting. I'm not sitting here listening to myself. Oh, but the thing is, that would be the sound that I would make. Oh, ooh, if I was to probably sit here. The thing is, possibly. Possibly, possibly, possibly. I don't know, maybe I would benefit from listening to some of them. But, you know, but I've not listened to pretty much anything, hardly anything that I've ever recorded since 2006. Apart from occasionally. And I remember I, I laid back here in my big black squeaky chair... And I listened to a, I think it was a relaxation recording, which lasted for about an hour. And I listened to it. And I was listening, and I thought, oh, I'm quite good at this. Because it worked. It really, you know. You hear all that little, that's little, little baby birds in the attic. And I was thinking, oh, and it's weird considering it was my voice, because some may think that would be a little bit of a a strange experience to hear your own voice, because, you know, I know some people, pretty much everybody that I've ever heard talk about this particular subject regarding hearing her own voice for the first time uh, kind of surprised at how they actually sound well I know how I sound I sound exactly the same way as I do on a recording because I've tuned myself into it now after years and years and years of doing it when I hear myself even though it's only briefly I know exactly how I sound that was one of the most boring things I've ever said I think but yeah it's I know when things are really boring because that's when I'm thinking oh this is sometimes I have to stop myself in a conversation with somebody and just say sorry I can't continue with this conversation. It's too boring. Sorry. And that's because I'm being boring, not because they're being boring. It's just I have to end what I was saying there. It was too tedious. It's just no. There's no... It's no excuse for me to be that boring. But in these recordings, there's every excuse because that's what it's all about. So, a nice 20 minute explanation about why I'm doing these. Well, actually, it wasn't really an explanation about why I'm doing them. More as in how I kind of developed them. Although, you know, I made a recording... it three four months ago and it was good I mean you know I actually felt really pleased with it and it was a let me boy to sleep and it was I was talking about being on the beach with my friend and we had some like weird really weird weird conversation and I was really pleased and I thought this is good it's really good but then somehow I don't know how but somehow I managed to have deleted it and it wasn't recorded properly luckily I've got I don't know how I did it I can't even remember what it was I was recording it on I lose track 
but I think this is I don't know what number this is 118 or 119 or something like that so I was looking at the stats I don't know how it could be so so much scraping in the cavity I do wonder if the water is going to fall down can you hear that unless it's unless it's the neighbour is just trying to dig her way up into my flat which would be I wouldn't mind actually <laughs> but uh, so I'm recording this at I record all weird times you know I remember someone once said don't you record it you know it's like I should be recording this at night time when I'm in bed and I can't you know I have to do it when I'm awake because if I lied down in my bed or on my bed and did this, I would fall asleep. I have made recordings where I've lied down and um, I've kind of managed to do it, but I end up talking so slowly and I do drift off when I'm making those recordings. And I, I kind of, especially some of the recordings where I've counted down, like I say it's an insomnia session, I've counted down from 100 to 1 and I lose track of what number I'm on. So I'm down to, let's say, 69. And I just sort of drift off and... Uh, and then I kind of come back in my mind and I'm I'm alert again but I don't know what number I'm on I kind of like what number did I last do was it 70 is it 59 uh and it's strange because sometimes I then start thinking, well, does it really matter? Because maybe they're also drifting off and the people listening possibly aren't sitting there taking notes. You know, they've got a big list of a hundred numbers and just crossing them off as I say them. No one's ever contacted me and said, you forgot 43. You forgot to say 43. So yeah, that's never happened. Doesn't mean that I've ever for not forgotten 43. I might have done. Sounds like some kind of weird insomnia bingo session. Well, not on. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So the weather's been quite nice. It's been a lot brighter, like during the day, and it's quite weird because it's what well, it's just gone six o'clock or something in the evening here and the and now the television's making noises that's nice there's a lot of weird sounds in this place today you've got the hoot hoot outside uh, the not the dove Uh, pigeon, that's it. Pigeons are doves, really, aren't they? They're just 
the same kind of species, but they're birds. But doves and doves and pigeons aren't they the same? Except we like doves because they're part of magic tricks. Maybe I can actually hear both sides now. So in the garden, in front of me, it's in the it's in the back, but I'm in the you know it's in a big tree near in the garden where I live. There's a pigeon going, uh, 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 uh. and now I can hear the response of another pigeon that's the other side of the building, which would be the front of the building, going. Uh, 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 uh. I'm thinking, you know what? What are they waiting for buses to come along? I mean, why don't they just fly over? Why, why have to, why go through all that trouble of like calling really loudly like that, interrupting people? drift off I had a bath and I had a real clean up today and I mean I should reframe that rephrase that rather you know I had a bath I had a real clean up I didn't mean I cleaned myself right up I meant I emptied myself of all the dirt no Good old scrub. No, that's not what I meant. Uh, I vacuumed my flat, or most of it, apart from the bedroom, because that's where Andre was. By the way, Andre's my hedgehog. Um, and there were some kids shouting in the street. Yeah, so yeah, so I vacuumed and I sort of tidied up and yeah, had a good old tidy up and all that stuff and got the rubbish out and put it into the bins and I ran a bath and I had a bath and then I had a some tea cakes and a drink and watched a little bit of telly. And the thing is, I was so tired by all that bending over and bending around because my lower back has got a few little issues, got a few issues of its own going on. I need to talk to it, have a little chat. But uh, I feel like I've done something physically and I hadn't really done much. There was a lot of bending involved. As you can hear, there's background sounds. I don't normally make recordings this time of the day. So I haven't, um, I'm just quite enjoying the, it's still being light at this time of the evening, and at the weekend the clocks go forward, so the light will be even brighter, well not even brighter, but it will last longer, so if it's still light at this time, It'll probably be getting dark about 7, which means next week it'll be 8 o'clock before it gets dark. And I'll be able to take Andre out in the evening and it'll still be light. And that'll be 
delicious. Be a very delicious moment for me. I think we should use the word delicious more often. I think you should join me in this. You get into work on Monday. How was your weekend, Bob? It was delicious. Just see what response you get. Or you could just be vague, come back from the toilet, sit down, sigh, and just say, oh, that was delicious. And then maybe thinking, what was, what was delicious? Wonder what he's been doing. So maybe delicious could be the word of the day. So so I might say to you, so what was the recording like? The the let me bore you to sleep. Did you listen to it last night? He said, yeah. Yeah, I listened to that Jason bloke again. So what was it like? And you could say it was delicious. You kind of saw that coming though, didn't you? Because I think I I set that up to be predictable. Oh, Andre's run off now. He's going to find a way of causing chaos for me. I think that's his one purpose in life. He's to cause problems for me. <laughs> He's... He's just a little cheeky little monkey. Well, he's a hedgehog, but you know, cheeky little hedgehog. In fact, I said to him, was it earlier on? Because he was in the bedroom and he was saying, Daddy, I said, yeah, he said, can you let me out of the bedroom, please? I said, why? He said, well, I don't like it when you put me in here and close the door. I said, yeah, but I'm cleaning the flat. I need to, you know, I need you out of the way while I'm doing it. He said, yeah, but I don't like it. But I didn't open the door because otherwise it would run out. So I was talking underneath the door to him and he was talking underneath the door to me because there's a little bit of a gap. I couldn't see him, but I could see his little nose sniffing. And he's like, <laughs> but I want to get out. And I said, uh, yeah, but I don't want to let you out, really. He said, what kind of, what kind of father are you? Do uh, you, you want to know what kind of a father I am? He said, go on, what? I said, I'm a delicious father. That's what I am, I'm delicious. And he said, that's creepy. That's really, I feel really uncomfortable right now, Daddy. That's a very strange thing to come out with. I said, it's no stranger than you talking to me underneath a door. He said, yeah, fair enough, I'll give you that. But saying that word delicious and the way you said it it just strange I don't think it should be used in that way I said why not hedgy he said w- what what did you call me I said hedgy and he sneezed twice in disbelief it was a very delicious sneeze. <laughs> and he said, uh, why are you calling me Hedgy for? I said, because that's your new nickname. He said, you can't just give me a new nickname. My name's Andre. I said, yeah. But now it's Hedgy. 
Well, why hedgy? Because you're a hedgehog. He said, Dad, I can't believe we have to have this conversation again. I'm not a hedgehog, I'm a ferret. I said, no, you're not. You're a hedgehog. You're a delicious hedgehog. And he said, please stop saying that, Daddy. It's disturbing me more than you can imagine. And I said, well, okay, if you want me to stop saying it, then tap dance for me. He said, what? I said, I would like you to tap dance for me. He said, uh, how am I supposed to do that? I said, listen, hedgehogs are very good at tap dancing. You've already got the wooden feet because all hedgehogs have got wooden feet, haven't they? He said, what? You think hedgehogs have got wooden feet? Yes, they clog when they walk. They've got like wooden clogs, which means they can tap dance. <sighs> this is going in a very different direction to the way I thought it was going to go, Dad. Firstly, I'm not a hedgehog. But if I was a hedgehog, I wouldn't have wooden feet. I'd just have feet. I said, wooden, wooden feet doesn't mean they're not feet. Oh, well, now he knows I'm talking about him. He's come up to say hello. You're going to say hello. You're going to give me a little sneeze. Give me a little sneeze. Can you give me a little sneeze? Yes. Go on. I'll, I'll do. I'm going to. I've got these magic powers over him. So I'm going to concentrate on him sneezing and seeing if it happens. I'm just going to focus on him. We'll all focus together on him sneezing. Focus. 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 You're going to sneeze. You're going to sneeze any minute now. You're going to sneeze. A sneeze. Hold it while I get the pepper. That's it. Now you're gonna sneeze. You're gonna sneeze for daddy. Sneeze. I'm not letting you go till you do a big sneezy. Because you do the cutest little sneezes in the whole world. You know that, don't you? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. What he actually wants is his dinner. Because it's dinner time, isn't it? Sometimes I give him his dinner at 5.30. Sometimes I give him his dinner at 6. Sometimes it's later than that. You know, it depends really. Because if he's asleep... I don't wake him up to give him his dinner. I used to, because he was a novelty. You know, it's like, oh, Andre. He'd say, yes. Ooh. And he'd yawn. And I'd say, baby, you want your dindins? He'd say, oh, that's ever so pleasant of you. That's very considerate. I'd say, it's fine. You're my little boy. Anything for you? And he said, Okay, well, just bring it over to me then, will you? I said, What? He said, Bring it over there. That's a, that's a good boy. So, would you be a good boy? I'm your dad. You get out of bed and be a good, behave yourself. You know, sometimes he sighs at me. 
he go. He literally does go. <sighs> he gets fed up with me sometimes. I think he yawns a lot. Anyone would think I was boring the way he yawns? Why are you yawning so much, baby, baby boy, baby boy? Why do you yawn so much? Why do you do that? Why? Why? Well, that's why. Because I can. Now just give me cuddles for a little bit. Come on. Just pretend you care just for a little while. Like I taught you. Pretend to be interested. That's it. You look at me, but you can kind of look in the distance. You're not really looking at me, but it looks like you are looking at me. You can kind of defocus your eyes and think about more pleasant things. And all the time I think that you're giving me attention and I have a glowing heart full of love and appreciation. Yes, yes I do, yes I do, yes I do. It's quite weird because the way I'm holding his head, it looks like his head is shrinking. So I'm thinking I might need to maybe relieve a bit of pressure. But his head looks tiny when I do that. When I pull his, when I pull all his skin back, it looks like he's had a, had a facelift. Didn't you? Because he's he's got quite um furry hair you know he can have a bit of a mohican sometimes but he's still the cutest little thing in the whole world aren't you yes you are why are you so cute how can you still be cute three and a half years later hey how can you still be so Limbing Q. Need to give you a bath. Do you want to have a bath, bath? You don't, do you? No, you don't. It's not really the end of the world having a bath, Andre. You should be able to do it. it. Just means cleaning you. You know, I know that you you got oil in your in your skin and it's self cleaning, but it's still got dirt there, especially when you go for walks, rolling around in the mud like a big hippo. He did the sneeze. You go now. Bye. Yeah, he did the sneeze. He did it. Uh, that's a lot of pepper I got through, but I got him to do it in the end. Uh, see how cute that is. It's cuter when he's not on me, though, because he got a tendency of... He likes to move closer to me when he sneezes in my face. Which isn't great. It's not wonderful completely. You know what I mean, isn't it? So yeah, he's is is a good hedgehog to have. Running around doing hedgehog things. It's weird though, considering he's not allowed to have milk. He don't half love milk. You know? I mean... He's lactose intolerant. Na naturally, he's not supposed to have dairy products, apparently. But... He absolutely... Like the thing that he loves more than anything in the entire world, apart from causing problems and 
making as much noise as possible when I'm doing a recording. I'm wiping his bum on my pillow. The thing that he loves most in the world is whipped cream out of the you know the spray cream that you get in the canister things. It'll actually literally do anything for that. You can get him to do tricks and all kinds of stuff. I don't buy tricks, I don't mean you know, send them out on the streets on street corners picking up men. I mean but he does uh you know, he will like lay on his back and roll over and absolutely loves whipped cream. But his stomach doesn't so it's really a case of there's a big change between the tongue so the taste it loves it loves the taste it, it'll eat a whole a whole thing a whole canister you know he will just eat as much whipped cream and he'll climb to get to it do anything to get to the whipped cream but his stomach doesn't enjoy the whipped cream nowhere near as much as his tongue does so yes it was interesting to see it the first time because my friend showed me because he had a had a ferret himself and he showed me how to he said you won't believe this I said what he said just just watch I said no I don't like surprises tell me he said, no, just watch. I said, no, I, don't, I want to know. I need to know. He said, it's, this is just it's too much. I need to know now. He said, no, no, I'll show you. No, no, I, want, I need to know right now. It's, but eventually he showed me and I couldn't believe the way Andre acted. Never had whipped cream before. And he was entranced. Absolutely Look at that noise he's making. How about behaving yourself, Andre? Eh? How about you behaving yourself? It can't be that difficult, can it? Eh? What? You can behave. <laughs> you can behave. Please. Some holding him, he can't get out, but he doesn't like it. What's wrong? I'm just holding you. That's all. That's a good boy. Just relax. Just relax. It's okay. I got you. That's it. Good boy. have to have it your own way all the time don't you yes you do don't you yes you do you can give daddy kisses do I get kisses I give daddy kisses give daddy kisses oh thank you there you go do you want to do a little sneeze no, he doesn't want to do his sneeze. He's gone back to. He's gone. He's gone into his bag, because he thinks I can't get to him there. But I can. I know how to get into his bag. <laughs> I created the bag. No, I didn't. I don't know why I said that. But yeah, I know how to get in. I just unzip it, really. It's quite easy, really. 
when you have the know-how. So I hope this was boring enough to fit into the scheduled let me bore you to sleep. Boring, 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 and it's still light outside. It's not light inside, but it's light outside, if you know what I mean. So I shall speak to you next time. Lots of love. Bye.